What does a tragic NFL career look like? There's lots of possible answers, awful career-ending injuries, off-the-field controversy, or the one that's the most interesting to me, wasted potential. Now, I'm not talking about great talents that go without winning a ring just because of the team around them. Instead, I'm talking about great talents that go without ever really seizing the opportunity to thrive in the NFL. For quite a while now, Heisman winner Derrick Henry has been trending in the direction of that second path. And just a few months back, he was on a trajectory to possibly lose his primary role on an NFL offense that just wasn't built for him. Thankfully for his future, one phone call to a much needed mentor opened the door to him changing his direction. But a lot would need to happen before he would ever have to consider even picking up the phone. To begin, let me paint a picture for you. Visualize a running back, 6 foot 3, 240 pounds, runs a 4-5-240 yard dash. Oh, I forgot to mention, he's in high school. How well do you think he did? Well, no matter where your guess lands, you're probably still wrong because Derrick Henry was the best high school football player the world has ever seen. In his four seasons at Yulee High School in Florida, Henry set the all-time record for rushing yards in a career, out of all high school athletes ever, overtaking a mark that had been set in stone for almost 60 years. But just talking about that record, it doesn't even start to do him justice. As a freshman, he averaged 224 yards per game and would continue to rise up from there. In 48 career games as a high school running back, Derrick Henry would accumulate 12,142 yards and 153 touchdowns. For those of you keeping score at home, that's over 252 yards and three touchdowns in every game he played. Insanity. He was the number one athlete in the entire nation ranked by ESPN, a bona fide five-star recruit through and through. So with that kind of track record, how do you follow it up to make sure you didn't just hit your peak in high school? Well, to make it simple, you go play for Nick Saban. When you arrive in Tuscaloosa to play football, no matter how dominant you were in high school, you're bound to experience some shell shock. You go from being the biggest fish in the pond to a minnow in an ocean. With extremely talented backs already on the depth chart like Kenyon Drake and TJ Yeldon, it would take a while for Derrick Henry's time to come. By the time his junior season rolled around, the job was all his, and he would seize this opportunity to make himself a household name. He'd set SEC records for rushing yards and touchdowns at the running back position, while managing to score in every game Alabama played. All of this en route to winning the Heisman Trophy and a slew of other awards, cementing him as the most accomplished running back in the country. The Crimson Tide were dominant, surprise surprise, and would complete a 14-1 title run on the shoulders of Henry's explosive running ability that year. Sounds like the next NFL superstar, right? Well, Henry thought so too, and it was clear he was ready to take the next step and declare for the NFL Draft. To understand his draft stock, let's take a look at the reasons why Henry's a truly unique back and how it's really easy to misinterpret how he should be used. Coming into the draft, Henry's biggest strength was his size and how he utilized it, but that size was also the biggest knock against him. Especially in the modern NFL where backs get smaller and smaller by the year, Henry is absolutely huge for the position. He is extremely fast and surprisingly agile for his size, but it takes him a while to build up steam, which was a problem for a lot of teams based on their run blocking identities. Another thing that makes Henry unique is the fact that he doesn't fit into the basic mold of a big bruising back as he looks. He's a lot better in the open field, and unlike guys like Leonard Fournette who are just straight hammers play after play, he doesn't necessarily excel between the tackles. For this reason, you can't just slot Henry into any backfield, you've got to totally commit to the guy. This relatively odd and demanding set of requirements in order to optimize Derrick Henry's use wouldn't really fully be understood for a few more years, and would ultimately factor into how Derrick Henry hit rock bottom long after being drafted. The Tennessee Titans choose Derrick Henry running back Alabama. Derrick Henry wasn't going to be the guy in Tennessee like he was for Bama, but he'd quickly plant his flag and raise rallying cries from Titans fans to give him more carries, especially in his second year in 2017, as he outperformed an ailing DeMarco Murray and led the team in rushing yards. It seemed like his time in the NFL spotlight was fast approaching, even more so once DeMarco Murray would announce his retirement from the NFL in the 2018 offseason. Along with this big development, there was also a shakeup in the coaching staff that looked to be for the better. The team hired Mike Vrabel at head coach and Matt LaFleur at offensive coordinator, who was just coming from manning the 2017 Rams offense that took the league by storm. His offensive mindset and tendencies felt like the perfect match for a runner like Henry, a zone run scheme to allow him to get into space and run after one cut. There was one problem though. Derrick Henry has never been a pass catcher. He's never needed to be. And if you watch the Rams and Todd Gurley in his excellent 2017 season, you've seen quite a few passes thrown to the running back out of the backfield in that scheme. 
So prospects started to shift when the Titans decided to fill that need and signed a pass-catching back, Deion Lewis, to a four-year deal. Nevertheless, Henry had been rising up as the second back in a similar system, and now he was going to be the first name called. Nearing the regular season, the hype train was leaving the station. The beat writers were talking about an expanded role. Matt LaFleur was bound to bring Derrick Henry and the Titans to the promised land. The Titans offense would finally take the next... And then the season started, and something was very clearly wrong. Derrick Henry was bad, and not just that, his counterpart Deion Lewis was severely outperforming him. Despite being given opportunities early, his yards per carry was at a career-worst 2.97 through the first four weeks. He looked slow, he wasn't finishing runs, and quite frankly, it was gross to watch him carry the ball. He knew that too, making comments multiple times about how he had to clean up his trash play. But his performances spoke louder than words, and they continued to be, well, trash. He never seemed to get into the flow of the games, and the dominant player Henry was at Bama, and the one that showed sparks of greatness in the NFL, it seemed like that guy was dead. He was understandably defeated, and the team was only using him as an afterthought to their new lead back, Deion Lewis. Derrick Henry's carry counts became anemic, and he failed to eclipse 60 yards on the ground for three quarters of the entire season. Yeah, for a pure runner, that doesn't look so good on paper. The team was getting frustrated, and the wheels of the trade rumor mill were just beginning to turn. Finally, after all his self-diagnosis of film study had failed and he was going out there week after week just to disappoint himself and Titans fans, Derrick Henry had had enough. He made a decision to reach out to former Titans legend running back Eddie George as a last-ditch attempt to save his future with the team and possibly his whole career. So they had a long and much-needed conversation about the letdown of a season he was having. Derrick Henry was never a guy who faced much adversity in his running back career beyond an injury his freshman year at Alabama and he desperately needed someone to knock him down a peg and show him that he could perform much higher than he had been. That's exactly what Eddie George did. He didn't play games or give him false hope. He let him know that he was running out of time. He told Henry that he was playing soft, not imposing his will on defenders like he should be at his size, that his legs were going dead on runs, not driving the pile, turning away from contact when he needed to make the defense pay. These were things that Henry had seen on tape, but needed to be criticized on by a legendary talent in order to really make it stick. George told him, There are rumors of you getting phased out and traded. Look around. Look at where all the carries are going to guys that aren't you. You have to run as if your career depends on it, because it does. And after hearing that, boy did he run. On December 6, 2018, Derrick Henry told the NFL he wasn't done yet. In a 30-9 steamrolling of a Jaguars team that had been ranked as a top 5 defense in the league, Henry carried the ball 17 times for 238 yards and 4 touchdowns. He was angry and this was the Derrick Henry game. He was not going to be denied for any longer. He showcased every one of his skills as a running back, finding the hole, excellent top speed, and absolutely brutal stiff arms. His 99-yard touchdown run was only the second in NFL history, and even without that, he had 139 yards on just 16 touches through the whole game. It made for quite a fun night on Twitter as well. Henry made the Jags look like one of his high school opponents, and that frustration he generated into massive production paid off pretty quickly for him. After never having more than 18 carries in a game that year, Henry received 33 totes the following week against the Giants, and he continued to run headfirst into the defense to the tune of 170 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. All of a sudden, sports media everywhere were searching for the magic explanation as to what coaching switch was made to fix Henry's productivity. But in truth, the answer was just himself. He admitted that Eddie George had set him straight, and that he was extremely grateful to have been given an opportunity at another chance to help the team. Unlike earlier in his NFL career, he wasn't going to take that chance for granted and ran hard to close out the season, totaling 585 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground in his final four games, with a last push allowing him to even eclipse 1,000 yards on the season. After the extremely disappointing start to the year Henry had, it was encouraging to see him take the reins into his own hands and dictate how he needed to be used by the offense, rather than just being subject to it. He got his swagger back and ran with purpose and finesse, able to take advantage of the physical gifts that he was born to use. 
I know the Titans didn't make the playoffs this past year by the thinnest of margins. If Derrick Henry is able to build on the explosive end of this past season, his rise to the top of the league would be yet another miracle for the Music City.